Hi, this slide is a sort of a transitional slide. We've been talking a little bit about uh, the building blocks of, of, of service value chain economics and how we kind of escape the give me last look uh, to meet the price kind of game. And we realize that there are some gaps between our vision of getting paid for our service value, either transactionally or in a win-win in a, in a, in a partnership kind of relationship. Um, and I just wanted to enumerate these gaps to also set up uh, some of the concepts that follow. Um, the first gap is that we have to be able to pick, um, you know, one target niche at a time to renew or do better at a given branch. Most distributors are guilty of selling uh, too many different niches of customers for starters, and they're trying to be all things to all people with a generic. Uh, uh, service capability, which isn't distinctive for anybody. So it's not, it's not going to get you last look in an extra point or two uh, capability. Then once we pick the niche for, for a given branch that's historically been our most successful and profitable one, we want to go out and more deeply and thoroughly understand what exactly is the service value equation, what six, seven, eight metrics, starting with you know the best array of beefed up one-stop shop fill rates, um, is going to take care of that niche so that we do have distinctive service. Uh, and then as we look at that, that category of customers, we have to realize that uh, based on the gross margin dollars per order per year that these, these accounts can generate, that's going to set boundaries for different service bundles. Just for, for example, if outside salespeople are actually going to cover an account on an effective productive basis, uh, I could build a case as to why that account has to have a minimum of $400 of margin dollars per month, $4,800 a year, and, or we're looking at eighteen dollars to $25,000 a year in sales minimum to, su to, 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 to support outside sales coverage. Otherwise, that has to be unbundled for a fee. Uh, we have house accounts that may have higher prices, strict minimum orders, trade credit from hell, and so forth. In other words, we have to make sure the cost of the service bundle is less than the margin dollars so we can make money. Um, once we've defined what the service value equation is, then we have to basically make it happen. So this issue is how do we uh, you know, measure it, manage it, to start to achieve it, but we're not going to achieve it unless we have station WIIM, which stands for what's in it for me. In other words, if all the employees can get the vision, and we have given the formula and say you got to get here early, stay late, do what you have to do uh, to make this happen, so we can get bigger share of customer, bigger share of niche, better you know total economics, better profitability. They say, well, that's fine and good, I guess, for the shareholders, but what's in it for me? And so there has to be something for them, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, then once we achieve basic service brilliance, uh, we have to be able to make that service visible. To the customer, but not just the service features, but rather the, the 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 economic benefits. The how do we lower their hidden costs, so that even though our price may be higher, our total value is the best, and if they still want a low price, then marry us, and we'll get the cost to serve down so much that we can afford to give them a lower price and still make a, a good living. Uh, another gap we have is how are we going to go out and sell without the rep, the, the outside rep having risk aversion. We've talked about how, if on a straight commission plan, the, the rep can, uh, can hypothetically think, well, gosh, if I don't meet the price, I, I, I'm at risk of losing everything and all my commission, better lose a little than all. And so I want to cave because I'm a conservative human being. And so we have to address that issue and come up with a solution. We also have to be able to sort of say, well, are our reps ready and, and able and educated and, and like eager, make my day, ask me to, to, to meet the price, because that's really going to be my, ability, my, my, my opportunity to pivot into plan B, which is, hey, of course we could give you a lower price, but we can't do it unless you work on my cost to serve and your total procurement cost. So how, let's, let's, let's get married and let's you know, lower, lower costs on both sides of the fence so we, we both win. And then the last key point is, is that even if we can measure, achieve, sell, get paid for, rewarded for service value, and even convert some of our relationships from transactional into win-win supply chain, 
that still does not solve the problem we have with some of our biggest customers who are huge cost to serve uh, activity traps and are killing us. We're actually losing money uh, on them. And there the issue isn't getting paid more as much as it's how do we, we go out and, and, in a sense, teach them to buy more effectively so we turn a lose-lose situation into a win-win. So we're now going to pivot into looking at what I call value exchange management. Thanks.